My Last Touch is by Robert Brown in his dramatic monologue based on the life of an Italian duke from the 16th century. The poem is set in 1564, three years after the death of the Duchess. An emissary, or messenger, has been sent to the duke from the court of Tyrol. The count is the father of the duke's next wife. The duke shows the emissary around his luxurious home, pointing out elaborate pieces of artwork and sculptures as if, he, as to, if to prove his wealth and good taste. He then invites the emissary to view a painting of his late wife, which he keeps hidden behind a curtain. He remarks on her character, suggesting that she was unfaithful to him, and hints that he might have had her killed because of it. During his speech, the Duke makes himself look arrogant, insensitive and selfish. The structure. This is one long speech and is pre presented as one continuous stanza, pretending to be a conversation. It's divided into rhyming couplets, but to mimic unrehearsed speech, there are lots of twists and turns within the lines, shown by a variety of punctuation. For example, she thanked men good, but thanked some how I know not how. Language. There are lots of personal pronouns in this poem, which are significant as one of the themes of the poem is the narrator's high opinion of himself and his arrogance. The most powerful use of personal pronoun appears in the title itself, My Last Duchess, as the personal pronoun mine shows ownership of his wife rather than an equal relationship, and she's, uh, it suggests that she's part of his collection of art and riches. The Duke's arrogance is also evident in his boast about his 900-year-old name, which he feels the Duchess should be exceptionally grateful for. However, in his opinion, the Duchess fails to appreciate the honour of this gift he bestows. Some key quotes you should remember. Lines 13 to 15. Sir, it was not her husband's presence only called that spot of joy into the Duchess's cheek. The Duke is explaining the expression on the Duchess's face in the painting. He's describing her face as having a spot of joy in it, perhaps a slight blush of pleasure. It wasn't just her husband's presence that made her blush this way. The Duke seemed to think that that should be a look he had only for her and was jealous that she shared it with others. Lines 21 to 24. She had a heart, how shall I say, too soon made glad, too easily impressed. She liked whatever she looked on and her looks went everywhere. The Duke describes the Duchess as too soon made glad in line 22 and too easily impressed in 23. This is the main problem with her. Too many things make her happy. Another way of looking at it is that she's not serious enough. She doesn't save her spot of joy for him alone. She's not the discriminating snob he wants her to be. She, sees ev ev she likes everything she sees and she sees everything. This implies that her looks are gazing at other men and causing her to blush. Line 34 to 35. Who'd stoop to blame this sort of trifling? The Duke asks his listener a rhetorical question. Who would actually lower himself and bother to have an argument with the Duchess about her indiscriminate behaviour? He thinks the answer is nobody. He doesn't believe that he should point out the failings that the Duchess has, perhaps because this will highlight his own failings in choosing the perfect wife. It doesn't appear to be much of an honest and open relationship. Possibly the most important lines in the poem are lines 45 and 40 to 46. This grew, I gave commands, then all smiles stopped together. The Duke claimed that the, this grew, that is, the Duchess's indiscriminate kindness and appreciation of everything got more extreme. Then the Duke gave commands, and as a result, all smiles stopped altogether. Our best guess is that he had her killed by word of command rather than doing this himself. Um, she's not his duchess anymore, she's his last duchess, so she's clearly no longer on the scene. Finally, lines 52 to 53. Though his fair daughter's self, as I avowed as starting, is my object. We finally learn why the Duke is taking the messenger around his property. He is the servant of a count and the Duke is wooing the count's daughter. The Duke tells the servant that he knows about the count's wealth and generosity, so he expects to get any reasonable dowry he asks for. But his main object in the negotiations is the daughter herself, not more money. Overall, throughout the poem, the Duke's arrogance is explicitly clear. It's almost like he's deliberately showing the portrait to the messenger, as, as if to warn that if the next wife isn't, just, isn't perfect, that she may well also have the same fate.